Everybody glad you're here. I thank God for you. I wish that I could have greeted everybody personally, um, but I hope that you feel the presence of God, not just at work in this place, but at work in your heart. Um, if you're a guest, uh, we're delighted to have you with us. This is a very special big deal weekend for us. We are honored to have Sean and Catherine Lowe with us, and I got to tell you before they get up here, most of you have probably seen them on TV or People Magazine, but these guys, um, they are such authentic folks. And in terms of having a real relationship with Jesus, these guys are the real deal. So we're honored. I've got to thank you, Central Christian. This is a part of our Greater Generosity Initiative. Our heart is to maximize the excellence of our ministry to our marriages, our family, and our children. And this is a reflection of that. And I'm grateful to be a part of a, a church family that says, let's get out there and invite people to come who have an amazing story and who God is using in an amazing way. So without any further ado, let me, it is my honor to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Sean and Catherine Lowe. I thank God for you, Sean. Thank you. Um, for those of you that don't know us, because we look a lot like twins, <laughs> I'm David, this is Sean. Would you welcome Sean again, please? Thank you. I thank God for you, man. I think the gift that you and Catherine uh, have been to our church this weekend um, I'll never forget you, and I will continue to keep you in my prayers. But you've been, for the last couple of years, I can't even imagine the ride that you guys have been on. Um, so how, how did this thing uh, get started for you? Well, it, it all started about two and a half years ago. I was selling insurance for my brother-in-law, which I vowed I would never do. Um, my insurance is kind of the family business. My grandfather, my father, and my brother-in-law all sold insurance, and, and I just knew I was never a suit and tie guy that wanted to sit behind a desk all day. But uh, I'd gone through, through some things that uh, I finally reached a point where I was like, I need some stability. Mm. There's nothing more stable than insurance. And so my, my brother-in-law hired me, and just, just like I thought, I did not like going to work. Uh, I didn't like putting on the slacks. I didn't like making cold calls and talking about auto insurance and life insurance. It's just, it, it wasn't for me. And and I remember I would pray on a daily basis, and I would say, God, you know this isn't where I want to be. You know mm. this is not my heart's desire. If you want me to be here, I will do it with a joyful heart, but you know this doesn't make me happy. And um, it wasn't long after, after saying those prayers where I was out in my neighborhood walking my two dogs one day, and my phone rings, and it was a Los Angeles area code, and I didn't know anyone in Los Angeles. And I pick it up, and there's a girl on the other end of the line that says, hi, my name is Carly, and I'm with the casting department for The Bachelorette. Now, I didn't sign up for The Bachelorette. Um, I would never be a part of a cheesy reality TV show. <laughs> and it didn't take me long to figure out that my sister and my brother-in-law were behind it. They had submitted my name and application. And so I, I tell this nice girl, I say, you know, no offense, I just don't want to be a part of it. You know, I'm not going to subject myself to that type of public criticism and, and be on a cheesy show like that. <laughs> and uh, she says, well, just think about it. You know, you might be able to travel the world wow. and uh, meet some cool guys in the process. And, and she's, you know, I thought, she's got a point there. You know, I'm tired of going to work every day. My free <laughs> vacation is, is sounding wow. pretty good right now. And and so uh, I called her back and I said, okay, what do I need to do? And she said, submit a video of yourself answering these questions we have for you. And they were really ridiculous, cheesy questions like describe your ideal woman, what's your perfect date look like, that kind of thing. And huh. So I submitted that video and I guess they liked it and they called me back and said, okay, we'd like to have you out to Los Angeles for a casting call. Wow. And that's, that's where I meet with the producers and all that stuff. And Lo and behold, uh, a few months later, I'm, I'm on the show. Unbelievable. <laughs> Never imagining where it was going to take me. Uh, God is good. Um, well, what was that like? I mean, you go from being a regular guy. I mean, you know, you kind of did the high school thing. You were a big-time football star. And 
got a scholarship to Kansas State, played football there, out of college doing the insurance thing. And then all of a sudden you go from that world to this Hollywood world. Yeah, it, it was really bizarre. And I had no idea what I was walking into. And I didn't know if I would, uh, my worst fear is that I would get kicked off on the first night. And then you got to go <laughs> home and face your friends. Like, wow, she didn't think a lot of you, did she? Um, but I, I didn't know what I was getting into. But I did know that I, I needed to arm myself because I had reached a point in my life where I considered myself a, a mature believer. You know, mm. I spent a lot of time in the Word, studying the wow. Word and, and God's message to me and how I should live my life and, and, and staying in constant communication with God. And I knew that I was going into uh, this thing that I was just really unsure of. And I, I knew that they didn't really have my best interest at heart. <laughs> and so I, I needed to prepare myself. And so I, I brought my Bible with me and I brought my devotionals with me. And I promised myself that throughout each day, you know, I would stay in prayer and stay in constant communication with God to make sure that, you know, I did things his way and not my way. Mm. You know, I want to tell you something. Last night I talked to a young lady who heard you share that. And she told me she'd driven a new stake in the ground that she was going to start, get back to doing her spiritual disciplines and get into the Word and get into prayer. So yeah. you already had, I know you've had impacted tons and tons of lives, but I wanted you to, to know about that. And that's, that's so great to hear. For so long, you know, I, I was raised in a Christian home by two amazing Christian parents, and I accepted Christ in, at an early age, but I was just going through the motions uh, in work, in my relationships, mm. in, in my daily life. Yeah, I'd go to church on Sundays, but I, I really wasn't studying the Word. I really wasn't, I didn't have that intimate relationship with Christ that, that I need in my life. I was just kind of that, that Christian that was lukewarm, so to speak. And, and somewhere in my mid-20s, I figured out, like, this, I'm, I'm not getting anywhere doing this. And, and I'm, not, I'm certainly not getting anywhere chasing my own selfish desires, mm. you know, for so long. Even though I was a Christian, I was still go the direction that made me happy. Mm. And I would, I would chase things that, that brought me pleasure and not necessarily things that brought the Lord pleasure. Yeah. And I realized pretty quickly that yeah, I'm not getting anywhere. And then all of a sudden, once you do that after a while, you figure out that, wow, I, I feel all alone out here and I feel empty inside. Um, now, of course, I wasn't alone because God was next to me the entire time with his arms wide open saying, come back to me. I love you. I want that relationship with you. But that's how I felt. And mm. so I finally just reached a point in my life where it's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take ownership of my faith and I'm going to mm. get that's to huge. know God the way God wants me to get to know him. Awesome. Well, so you're, you're in this whole new arena of um, the spotlight being thrown on you, high pressure. So how did that work for you, being in the Word of God every day? What was that so, like? So the way the show works is in this particular season, the first couple of weeks we were in North Carolina, and they put, I'm one of 25 guys, they put us all in this big mansion in, in North Carolina, and, and then after a couple of weeks we start traveling around. But this mansion had a little a porch on it, and each morning I would just take my Bible and my devotionals out there, and I would do my quiet time. And of course, there's no cameras, and it was just me, and you know, that was my time in the morning. Until one morning, a, a buddy of mine, another cast member on the show, comes out, and what are, you, what are you reading? And I tell him, you know, I'm just reading my Bible and reading this devotional. And at the time, I was reading uh, Jesus Calling, which is a great little daily devotional. Mm, right and, on. And uh, he asked me to, to read that day's devotional, and I did. And, and I could tell that it really resonated with mm. him, and he was just kind of in awe of the words and the wow. power that those words held. And um, he came back the next morning, and, and actually in the next few days, more and more guys started to come out there on the porch, and, and they, weren't, they didn't only want to hear what the day's devotional was. They would say, read, read yesterday's, read the day before. That's and they, incredible. They couldn't get enough of it until we got to the point where there were probably eight or ten guys out there on the porch with me hearing God's word, and I knew that there were a lot of those guys that had never heard the message of, mm. of God's love or grace and had never heard the gospel. And uh, it, it just resonated with so many of them because God's words hold so much power. And uh, it's, it's very magnetic. That's what I found. Yeah. And um, one of those guys, thank God, actually came to know Christ right through, the, through the experience. And I... I I want to say that I helped plant some seeds with the other guys, and eventually 
Um, one of the guys that was taken so much with the book, I, I just decided to give him that devotional, and he still wow. emails me today saying that he keeps it by his bedstand and, and still reads it. So it was quite the blessing to be able to share that. Oh, that's awesome. And that guy that, yeah. That, that guy that Sean just mentioned lives in San Francisco. And so Sean's from like the Dallas area. He's in Hollywood. That guy takes the book back to San Francisco. These other guys that were there, um, they live in other places. And so Sean, I mean, this is good for me because I love to start my day in the Word too, but he's reading the Bible for himself, to get himself strong, but God uses it and he will use it for you. I mean, if you get in the Word every morning, it's gonna be for more than just you. It'll be for the people in your life. And God will wield you to his glory. He'll share his life in you with other people so that Jesus can come alive in them. And so evidently, because I watched, um, yeah, on my computer screen, and I was blown away both by you, where's Catherine, and by Catherine. The way that you conducted yourselves, the way that you handled uh, the tough stuff, I was amazed. I, I, you know, I'm old enough to be your dad. And I was that kind of proud of you. I was dad proud of both of you. I just, the, the, the thing, the word that, came, the word that came to my mind last night as I was thinking about it is that you guys are class. And you're, you're not showy, you're not snooty, you're just real people, but um, you show a lot of class. And I just have such respect for the two of you um, because of that. Thank you. And I, I think... Once I made that decision, somewhere in my early to mid-20s, to really take ownership of my faith, um, I was amazed at how my entire outlook or attitude on life changed. When I, when I wake up in the morning and I spend time in the Word, it's amazing how differently I treat people, how mm. differently my mind thinks. Um, when I don't do those things, a lot of times my mind tends to wander on things that it probably shouldn't be thinking about. But... It just rejuvenates me every morning, and I, I think that's a light that people are able to see. And uh, I think since taking ownership of my faith, I've been able to draw more people into mm. uh, just opening up a conversation about why I'm, I'm acting the way I am and, and what my beliefs are. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because you're, you, from all intents and purposes, you're doing the right thing. You feel like God has led you to this opportunity. You don't really want to do it, but you say yes with your family's encouragement. You get in the Word every day. And then we know that the bachelorette didn't end so well for you. Yeah, not so much. So, I, you know, as David said, I, I got on the show and, and literally more than 10,000 people apply to be on the show. And, wow. and, and so many guys want to be on it. Um, and I, I didn't apply and I didn't necessarily want to be on it to find love. I just wanted a free vacation. So <laughs> the fact, the fact that I got on it was kind of mind boggling to me. And, and, and I realized, you know, God must have me here for a reason. And, mm. and when I was able to kind of share my witness with those guys, I thought, okay, that was the reason why I was, I was put here. And then, uh, of course I didn't think you could find love or develop real feelings for someone on a reality show. And, after uh, several weeks went by, I started to think, wow, I really actually have developed feelings. And I thought, okay, now God has put me here to find my wife, and mm. I've got it all mapped out now, and I know exactly where my life's heading. And for those of you who don't know, each week, uh, the girl has a bunch of roses, and then there's guys there. And if there's three guys standing, she has two roses, which means one guy will not receive a rose, and he goes home. And so I reach the end of my, my journey, so to speak, and uh, I'm standing there with, with two other guys, Jeff and Ari, and I know I've got it in the bag, not a, not a worry. <laughs> and so here comes the rose ceremony, and, and she, she says Jeff's name first and hands him the rose. And my first thought is, oh, man, poor Ari's going home. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had developed a friendship with these guys, and I, I truly felt bad for Ari because he was on his way home. <laughs> and uh, to my surprise, her, the next name she called was Ari. Mm. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny to look back and laugh now, but I was, I was truly heartbro heartbroken because those feelings were real, and, mm. and there was so much confusion because I knew that God had put me there for a reason, and I thought it was to find my wife and, and, you know, the rest was going to be a, a fairy tale. And, 
everything had just kind of been taken away from me in that moment. And I went back to the hotel and I was tossing and turning and I just felt so uneasy with everything. And I had so many questions. And, and, and throughout this process, one of the weird things is that they, they take your phone away from you and there's no internet access. So you're really cut off from the outside world. So I couldn't talk to friends and family at home and ask them for their advice and that kind of thing. And so after being kicked off, I finally had the chance to call home and it was about three in the morning and I, mm. I called my parents and my dad answered the phone and I told him what had happened and he said, you know, son, just come home. We want to love you. We want to put our arms around you and just shower you with love. And he said, you know that, that God has greater plans for you. Mm. And, you know, as bad as it hurt, and it sounds funny because it's just, it's just heartbreak and I know everyone goes through it at some point, but... As, as bad as it hurt and as confused as I was, I still knew that, mm. that God was there with me. And I still knew that he had greater plans for me. And it doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to take away the heartache or take away the sorrow or despair, whatever you're going through. But it is so reassuring to know that, that I've got this all-powerful God mm. that is my best friend that is going to mm. get me through any circumstance. Right on. You know, something I, I, I have seen in Sean and Catherine that I want us to catch is that a, a mistake that we can make is that we wait till life hammers us, and then we want to pray, and then we want to read the Bible, and it's like playing catch-up. And so that here, here Sean doesn't realize that the hammer is going to fall hard. His heart's Going to be, he's going to be wrecked. His heart's going to be broken. He's going to feel the bitter sting of rejection. But he's been building himself up on the inside all this time. And so that when the bad thing happens, unexpectedly, out of the blue, his spirit is strong. And even though his heart's broken, um, he's going to recover. He's going to endure that body blow and bounce back. And so what, what was that like? You go home, you've been devastated. Yeah, so I, I go home and I'm heartbroken and and luckily, I do have a great family and great friends there to kind of love me and, and help me get over it. And, and about a month later, I get a phone call from one of the producers of the show. And I, I wasn't expecting this, but he said, you know, how would you like to be The Bachelor? And I told him, I said, man, you guys just put me through the ringer. I don't, I don't know if I want to sign up for that again. And, and, and I told him, I said, let me think about it and pray about it. And, and I'll get back to you at the end of the week. And so... Once again, I, I call my parents because I know they offer a lot of wisdom, and, and I was thinking that they might say, you know, son, maybe you should just pass on this go around. Mm. And they both said the same thing. They said, uh, you know, we feel like God has opened this door for you, and wow. you deserve, or you owe it to yourself to walk through it. And that, that really surprised me. And, and actually, going into The Bachelorette, my mom was really skeptical because she knew the reputation of the show. Yeah. She knew, you know, the, it... it there's a lot of discussion about sex and the fantasy suite and all these things, all these things that, that don't bring glory to God. But I think she was, she was able to see how I still could bring mm. that glory to God through a show that doesn't necessarily uh, do that on a regular basis. Yeah. And so she was a big supporter of me taking that next step and, and being The Bachelor. You know, something I want to say, I haven't said this to you before, Sean, but I want to say it in front of everybody, and not just for his sake, but for all of ours. Um, you know, his, his mom and dad um, got real proud over him. And I think that the, the, the way that we live our lives ha has a, an opportunity. Your parents impacted you, but you had the opportunity, maybe unawares, but, but the way you conducted yourself under pressure um, made a believer out of your mom in her son. And her pride said, yeah, you, go, you can go back into the lion's den because I know that you're going to handle it great. And I think that speaks a ton to me. I hope it speaks a ton to you that the way we conduct our lives has an impact uh, on our homes, on our families, and the people closest to us. And the, that we can, we can live our lives in such a way that raises their spirit. Well, so now, oh, go oh, ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. And I'll say this as well. When I was on The Bachelorette, I had no idea how I would be portrayed. I was one of 25 guys. And honestly, I thought there wouldn't be much of a distinction between me and this guy over here. Um, it's, it's really hard to stand out in a big group, and I'm not the, the loudest guy in the room anyway. And, and I was so surprised. Once I got home and the, the show started to air, 
how people would come up to me and, and just say, thank you so much for taking a stance and, mm. and thank you for your morals and, and your integrity and character and all those things. And it's amazing how God will stand out from everybody else. Although right I couldn't see it at the time and, mm. and I thought, well, this guy over here is a good guy and this guy's a good guy and yeah, I'm a good guy, so why should I stand out? Uh, God stood out. Right on. And, and believers would always come up to me and say, thank you for, for taking a stance uh, in a situation that's not easy to, to take mm. a stance. And, and then non-believers would come up and say, we really appreciate your values. Well, what they see as values is really Jesus shining through me. Right they on. just may not know it yet. Mm. Yeah, pretty cool. <clears throat> hmm. Would you like to meet Catherine? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you should be excited. If this young woman had not been on TV and in People Magazine and the whole deal, she is a woman of incredible substance. And it, I am honored to have her um, by, uh, obviously by, you want that? <laughs> by Sean's side, but on, in this church. You're awesome. You guys have a great minister. He's wonderful. Um, So now you, you, even though you're in Seattle, Sean came out of uh, Irvine, you guys kind of have a similar journey aimed at the bachelor. Well, share your story with us, Catherine. Well, I, you know, I'm from Seattle. I was working at Amazon. I had my, fa my whole family's there. And my best friend calls me one day and it's probably late at night. She's married. She loves living through me because she feels like she can't do all these things. And she, she always put things on me. So one night she calls me and she says, I'm going to put you up for the bachelor. Which picture do you want of your, of yourself on the application? I'm like, what are you talking about? I do not want to be a part of that show. You know, I know the reputation. I'm not that kind of girl who parades around in a bikini, getting drunk and trying to get on um, airtime. And she's like, oh, whatever. And also, I, have a, I, I had a boyfriend at the time. And she neglected to care. Um, she didn't like him. So she continued on. And she says, whatever, whatever. You know, with my, you know, she really wanted me to be happy. So I tried to put it off as long as I could. Krista, please don't. But she did it anyway. Um, I love her. Um, so three months goes by. I, you know, not, not even one thing in my mind that has anything to do with The Bachelor. Didn't watch the show, was just working my job. And one day at lunch, I get, I get a call, same, similar call that Sean got. I um, mean, I, I received your information. I would like to know if you're interested in continuing the process. And I'm laughing. At myself. I'm like, Krista, are you kidding me? You really went through with that. Um, and I'm like, sure, you know, it's just an email. Why not? There's no harm. So I get off the phone, I call my boyfriend, and he's like, or I say, can you believe it? Krista really put my name in for The Bachelor. I told her not to do it. I can't believe that they called me and they want me. How ridiculous is that? He goes, you should do it. <laughs> and I still like just cannot believe, I, I, I was like, oh, that's not what I expected to hear from you, but okay, if we're, okay, so we're not together anymore. Um, <laughs> it was a very easy breakup. Um, so months go by and I, you know, in the process of figuring out what this means, having a really hard time actually, you know, if this is gonna hurt my reputation, am I gonna conduct myself well and going all, through all these questions, this is really what I need to do. So I watched The Bachelorette, which was the first time I'd ever seen the show. And I watched every single episode, and I noticed Sean, if you couldn't tell, I mean, he's a gorgeous man, I, I noticed that right off the bat. Um, but I also saw this light, and I was so attracted to him, not only physically, but just something was like, just drawing me in. I, wanted, I was curious, I wanna know more about him, and I hadn't said this before, but the, the last the episode that he had just spoke about, the last one that he was on, um, my best friend and I were watching the show with the intention of finding a guy that I would potentially want to be on the show for. And I start crying because she let him go. And I was like, what is wrong with you? Do you not <laughs> see like, how he could be a great husband? And I'm like, cannot believe I'm crying because the TV is on. She let him go. So um, I saw all this great 
in him. And through the end of the process, I was still um, in the names for being on the show. I said, I will not do it unless it's for Sean Lowe. Mm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you guys, that deserves our applause. And I've, you know, we've gone through three services already this week, and I, I, I've told you before. Um, for both, the truth, it's the truth about both you guys. Your parents put steel in you. But that says a lot about her character. Because how many people in our culture wouldn't want to jump at the chance, no matter what, of putting themselves out there? But here's a woman who says, no, no, no way. Only if it's a man of character who shares my values, only then would I step across the line and make myself that vulnerable. So, you know, I, you know, I think God honors that, not just because he, he is, has blessed you with your marriage, and I will pray again that he continues to favor you, but as I've said repeatedly this weekend and quoted for you, I'm going to speak it again into your lives, Ephesians 2.10. And I want you to hear it for you, because this is not just true of Sean and Catherine. This is true of everybody in this room. So you guys can hear it. I've looked at you before. I'm going to look at you and tell you this. You are the workmanship of God, created in Christ Jesus to do great things that God has prepared in advance for you to do. That's you. That's God's hope for you. And so I'm grateful for your applause for her, that she showed that kind of character and she merits that applause. I just want you to know that heaven applauds you because you're awesome. <laughs> okay, so now um, from reject to star, yeah. you're on The Bachelor. What's that like, Sean? Well, now I'm in the driver's seat. You know, now there's, <laughs> there's 25 women competing for me, which is... You know, I know a lot of you guys out there may be saying, well, that's, that's the dream right there, but it, <laughs> dealing with 25 women is not easy. It's going to be quite difficult. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of good times, and there's a lot of traveling and fun dates and things like that. And, and I knew from the moment I met her, I mean, this, she's, she's just a ball of energy, mm -hmm. and she, she just has this light about her, and she's, she's so positive and bubbly, and I, I, I want to be around her. I want to spend time with her. And, mm. I just enjoyed every chance I got for the first few weeks, but I realized that she wasn't really giving off any romantic vibes, and I started thinking, well, maybe she's just not interested in me, and you know, I'm going to get rejected again by this girl. And uh, then a, a couple more weeks go by, and she starts to, to let down that guard a little bit, and then we start to develop this, this romantic relationship of sorts. Mm -hmm. and, and I got to a point where I just, I, I couldn't, see myself saying goodbye to her. It was wow. so incredibly tough. And these dates, they'll start you at seven in the morning sometimes and they'll last until midnight. It's all day long and it's exhausting and you're getting to do a lot of cool things, but you know, what you see on TV that takes place for 15 minutes may have taken 12 hours to film. And uh, I would be exhausted after these long days and, and with the other women, you know, once they say cut, it's like, all right, good. I'm going to my hotel room. I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> but with her, I just, I, I wanted to be around her all the time. Mm. And, and I just couldn't get enough of her. And I, along the way, as I said, I, I tried to arm myself as best I could and stay in constant communication with God. And I, and I would just pray, like, God, just lead me in the right direction. And, and after I realized I was developing such strong feelings for Catherine, I was, I was saying, God, you know, if this is your will, then guide me. And, and if it's not, just please let me know. And and you're not contractually bound to propose to anyone on the show. Of course, they, they want that fairy tale ending, but mm. I knew I could have walked away from everything, and, mm. and that would have been fine too. But I knew that I was just falling head over heels in love with her, and, wow. and I, I knew the woman that she was. And, and when the big day came, I had no hesitation in, in getting down on one knee, and you know, because I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, <laughs> break you guys up here a moment. Uh, I thank God for your love. It's beautiful. Um, and I've asked you before, um, what he saw in you those first weeks were like you were holding out. And then something went off in you and you were like starting to say, okay, I'm letting my guard down. What, what was going on in your heart through that time? Catherine? Well, in the beginning, it, it is a very strange situation. So you have all these girls, they're gorgeous, they have all these accomplishments, and you're kind of like, how do I fit? Um, and so I kind of just let it slowly develop. I went on group dates, and then 
for, and I, and I witnessed him be kind to everyone. And I would see, because you're around camera people, you're around crew people, producers, everything, and he would know everybody's name. He knew everybody's name, he knew, he could ask them questions, it wasn't just, you know, they're my peons, that they're doing, they're doing something for me. It was a really, it was a relationship with everybody. And you, you notice these little things about people, um, and that was, it just resonated with me the whole time that I was watching him and, and going on dates with him. But our first one-on-one -on -one date, I was the last girl to have a one-on-one -on -one date. Hmm. Um, but I was fine with that because I was really obsessed with the Nutter Butters at the mansion. So I didn't, I didn't really, <laughs> I, I, I thought, he, yeah, cookies were she more She wanted important. to eat cookies as opposed to <laughs> spend time with me. My kind of woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, on our first one-on-one -on -one date, uh, we got to spend much more time together on the group dates. I was silly and funny, and all, he saw all these positive things, but we had to have a conversation, a long conversation. I'm like, what do I tell him? Um, you know, how do I proceed with this night? Because I want him to see that positive person. I want him to see that fun person, but I also want to know if he's going to like me for me and, and my heart. So I said something to him and I told him something that was a big experience in my life and I was so nervous and I was thinking, oh my gosh, he's totally not going to want me to be here, but I told him and he accepted me and that was, that was something so big for me that I trusted him and I trusted him with my heart. I could tell him anything. I felt comfortable. He knew who I was and not only were the things that I went on the show for true, which was that he's obviously very attractive, he's a man of God, he has a great family, but, you know, I kind of opened that curtain and I saw so much more. And it was because, you know, he had, had something in his heart that he let everybody know, which was he, he's a believer and he wanted everybody to feel his love. Mm. You said, yeah, awesome. Uh, you, you said something, and maybe you've said it before, but I wanted us to capture it because here, here's the deal. Marriage is marriage because it's supposed to be a picture of our relationship with Jesus. The Bible says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And so marriage is a picture. And when you said, um, he accepted me, you bared your soul, this vulnerable moment, you put yourself out there, you wanted him to know the real you, you bared your soul, and then you just said, and he accepted me. He accepted me. A and then he opens up to you. A and that's, that's the way our relationship with Jesus works. He, he knows us inside and out. He knows every dark thing we've thought, every dark thing we've done, every hurtful thing we've said. And when we open ourselves up to him, we're simply agreeing with him about what he already knows. But what we find when we're willing to do that, not only does he accept us unconditionally, unconditionally, the one thing you've got to know, God will never punish you. God will never be mad at you. God accepts you just as you are right now. He could never be crazier about you. But here's the deal. When you open yourself up to him, you receive more than just his acceptance. He opens himself up to you. So that's awesome. <laughs> um, so, you know, here's a, big, here's a big question to me. Yesterday, Sean and Catherine are in Virginia at this parade, second biggest parade in the U.S., 400,000 people there. And I wondered, you know, even when this began, our conversation about them coming, I knew that they'd been to all these swanky places, and we got them staying at the Hamptons, so we're cool. Um, <laughs> but they'd been around the world in exotic places. Why would they want to come to our humble church in an obscure place like Beloit, Wisconsin? So I've asked you three times, why? Why did you guys want to come? Well, I feel like we in... And when I say we, I mean we as in Christians have a duty, an obligation to share the message of God's love and grace and redemption. And he, he commands us to spread it to the corners of the earth. And I realized through this experience, I've been given this platform that may be bigger than, than someone else's, but whether I have the platform or not, it's my job to, to share his love and, and just how he can transform your life and really He's transforming your eternity. Mm. Um, 
And I'm so happy to come to Beloit, which, by the way, you guys are all great and friendly, and, and I've enjoyed my time here, but um, yeah, I feel compelled, I feel called to share God's message here, and um, I, I couldn't be happier to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I haven't said this before, but I'm incredibly proud of these guys, too. I wish I'd said that in every service, but I'm honored to let you see my church family. These guys are awesome, too. You know, when, when you start to fall in love with Sean, and then when he gets down on his knee and proposes to you, um, though you loved him and accepted his proposal, I, I, maybe there's some of this stuff you didn't know exactly you were signing up for, a parade in Virginia with 400,000 people, a, a church in Beloit, Wisconsin. How, how did that feel for you as your life begins to unfold and you're coming to a church to share your story? Well, I don't see any difference between you know the people that we are on a screen, on TV screen, or just regular life people. I think that it's so important to just shed your light to people. Mm. Um, I, when I was on the show and I met his family, I saw the reason why he was the way he was, the way that people were so attracted and wanted to be around him and, his, and, and I saw it in his family, and I wanted that for myself. I knew that the reason that they were so good and so loving and accepting was because of Jesus in all of their hearts. So when I went, and I, and I saw them and I met them, even for a minute, I knew that I wanted that for me. I wanted that for my family. I wanted that for our family and our future. Um, and I think that that's so important just to make sure that you shine your light on other people. So they're curious and they, you, you're planting seeds just like how everyone in his family did. And um, I just feel blessed and I want to make sure that everybody knows that they're loved mm. and that everybody just kind of comes together in that way. Yeah, I want to tell you both. Um, you, you are blessed, but you are also a blessing. And, uh, and that's the way it works, it's cyclic. You are blessed, we are blessed, and, and you're blessing us, you are a, a blessing. Um, you had a pretty cool wedding. Pretty unusual, uh, knock it out of the park wedding. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, one of the great parts of falling in love on The Bachelor and, and proposing is that they will give you this five-star wedding for free. So as a, as a groom, you know, that's a big relief for me. I don't have to worry about the cost of, of a wedding. And so they, uh, they fly her family and friends. Uh, um, why am I drawing a blank? Why am, yeah. What's the suburb? Oh, Santa Barbara? Santa Barbara. My, <laughs> sorry, mine Blake. Santa Barbara's where we got married. So her friends and family come in from Seattle. Mine come in from Dallas. And they give us this great grand uh, five-star wedding. But um, I knew that I wanted my dad to officiate it, as, as Catherine did as well. And, and my dad is, is a pastor back home. And, uh, you know, he's just this amazing man of God. And, and you know, I wanted my marriage centered on, on Jesus, and I wanted the wedding to reflect that. And it's, it's a live TV event, and it's on ABC. You know, I didn't know how they were going to feel about my dad sharing what I knew would be the truth to a million Americans. And, and since it's live, of course, they asked for a script of everything he was going to say. And so he had it all written out. And he basically, for those of you who saw it, he basically shared the gospel on TV in front of, you know, millions of people. And I thought, there's no way they're going to allow him to do that. Mm. And uh, it, yeah, I, I just know that God's hand was in that because they looked at his script and they said, it's okay, you can say it. And he didn't hold back. You know, he preached the truth. And it was, it was such a beautiful ceremony. And there for about 30 minutes, he talked about how Jesus is, is uh, the answer to all of our problems and how mm. our life should be centered on him. And it was just... It was a really beautiful thing. That's awesome. Um, you know, I'm, I'm interested, Catherine, what, you know, I mean, this has got to be kind of crazy, getting ready to get, be married and be married on TV and have your wedding on display, and, and, but for it to be memorable to you. What, what is it that you feel like, you know, I'm never, never going to forget what happened on my wedding day? What went on that you just found unforgettable? 
Well, the, obviously, it's your wedding day, so every bride is going to remember and, and take everything very special. But, you know, just as we were on the show, we really didn't think about the cameras. We didn't think about everybody else. We were really focused on each other and, and what made our relationship special. So when I went into the wedding, I was thinking, you know, all I care about is that my soon-to-be husband is there for me. And there, um, you know, I was so excited to hear his vows and really just make that covenant to each other and to God. And that, I mean, obviously everything else was beautiful. I had a beautiful dress and the flowers and all that stuff. But what was really, really important to me was getting married to a very godly man who would be a great represent representative to what I wanted in um, my family. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> We're never going to get done with this service. Yeah, it all merits applause. It's all awesome. And I... I just think it's, it really is a picture of a relationship with Jesus, how it escalates as we quietly feed ourselves on his word, as we're willing to stay true to our values and the steel that our mom and dad puts in us, that it comes out in determination to say, this is who we are and this is how we're going to be because of him no matter what anybody else thinks about it no matter how tempting it may be to go another way. And he just keeps piling on the favor. Um, so we've done this before in a couple services this morning, but I wanted to ask you one more time. You know, we talk about the grace of Jesus, that he, we can't work for him. He loves us without any performance on our part. and He accepts us unconditionally. We call that the good news. And I just wanted to ask you, Sean, first, um, where have you seen, how has Jesus been good news to your life? Um. Jesus affects the way I see the world. It, he affects the way I think, the way I treat others, the way I respond to difficult situations, everything. Um, I, I, people who have seen the show, they often come up to me and they say, wow, you're such a good guy. I mean, do you ever do anything wrong? Well, the truth is I've got a whole history of things that I'm not proud of, things that I, I don't want to share with anyone because I'm ashamed of them and just really bad things. Me but, too. I mean, what an amazing feeling to know that all of those bad things have been washed away. And right even, even while I was doing those bad things, you know what? I know mm. that, that Jesus was next to me with open arms just right saying, on. hey, please come back to me. Mm, just right come on. back to me. I want to love you. I want to wrap my arms around you. And, you know, life can be so difficult, um, whether it's losing a loved one or losing a job or struggling with addiction, whatever the case may be, it can be so difficult. And, and because I've been a believer for so long, I don't understand sometimes how people can go through life and not know Jesus. Mm. Because it's so reassuring to know that no matter what, no matter what I go through, what hardships I face, I've got a love that is so strong and a God that will never leave my side. And I know it's all going to be okay. And right on. <clears throat> the verse that I always like to remind myself of is James 4.14, where it talks about how life is but a vapor. Mm. You know, when you compare your time on earth, and I may live 30 years, I may live 100 years, it's just a vapor. It's here today, gone tomorrow compared to eternity. Mm. And yeah, that's, that's a reassuring feeling because right I know like the, the temporary setbacks I have here on earth are nothing in the grand scheme of things. And my job is to further the kingdom of God and, and to live for God's glory and to share God's glory. And, um, you know, I just, I, I don't know where I would be or, or the man I would be if I didn't have Jesus in my heart. He's awesome. Love you guys. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I, I want to, I know a bunch of you guys our guest today, and you've come because Sean and Catherine are here, and I just wanted to say something to you a moment. When Sean was having those devotions with his Bible and the Jesus Calling book out on the uh, balcony at that mansion, and his friends would come around him, um, I believe that those other young men, though they did not know Jesus yet, like Sean does, that God was at work in their lives. And so if you've come in here today because someone asked you or you saw it uh, got a door hanger or something, and you're a guest, I just want you to be aware that God is at work in your life. He is, he is reaching out to you, and He is doing stuff in your life just to draw you to Himself. That's how crazy He is about you. He thinks you're awesome. Um, you, you are worth the death 
of His Son on the cross to rescue you and to draw you into relationship with Himself and to validate indisputably that that's true. God raised His Son from the dead just to show that He's got the power, if you'll say yes, to draw you to Himself. Well, Catherine and both of you guys, um, I'm so blown away by you. This has been such a moment uh, for my life and for our church. I'm so, so grateful. But I wanted to give you an opportunity one more time, as you have before. And you may say something different now, you know, whatever's on your heart. But how has Jesus been good news to your life, Catherine? Well, like I said, I met, I met Sean's family. And um, when I met them, I, I was like, I felt changed because I'd never seen a family as much as I love my own, I'm not <laughs> trying yeah, to rank sure. on my own family, but mm-hmm. he grew up with this amazing family who was supportive and who were like the epitome of what a good Christian family is. Um, and I wanted, I, I didn't come from a Christian family and I saw that and I, all I could think was I want that and I want that in my life and I thank God for them every day because they brought me him Mm. who has been an amazing role model for me every day to go up and and challenge myself to be better for him, to be better for him. And I, you know, I feel nonstop love from Mm. the family, from him, from everybody in this community because that's just, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to love. And Mm. I am such a lover and I'm so grateful that I get to be a part of something that really is centered on on love mm. because it's so important for everybody to know that they're not alone. And I think that that speaks so much for what God has done. Yeah. You know, Jesus would tell these stories, called them parables. And your, your relationship has been a parable. Your lives coming together has been a parable. And it, it, it puts, it, you guys have made Jesus look good. And he looks really good in you. And I am grateful. Thank you. Right.